welcome to today's video. I am actually going to be sharing with you a story time, which is not normal for me. Most of the time I upload gameplays that come from my Twitch channel. Uh, I mostly play like Fortnite, Minecraft, Call of Duty, Halo, all of all that good stuff. So that's what I mostly upload. But today I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, recently, I actually got into an accident where I got a concussion. And now this wasn't just any concussion. I apparently suffered multiple concussions all at once. Um, I also have a fractured arm and a slightly fractured back. So I told you guys on Twitter and on Instagram that I was going to upload a video explaining what happened. So this is it. Um, if I do look over here, it's because I have some notes on the other screen that's going to help me just keep track of everything. Um, with my concussion, sometimes things can get mixed up. And so if I'm looking over here, it's just because I wanna make sure that I tell the story chronologically um, and as best as I can. So uh, also again, as far as memory goes, there are some uh, points in this story that I don't remember that um, people there had to tell me. So sometimes when I'm telling this story, it will be in the perspective of other people. So just keep that in mind. Both of my brothers, Luke and Jason, my sister-in-law, Amber, and my boyfriend, Jake, and I planned a whole ski trip. We we're super, super excited about it. Um, we were going to Taos, New Mexico. So we all drove from around the Dallas area. We all live in North Texas. We drove from Texas all the way to New Mexico. So my boyfriend and I, the first day, wanted to learn how to ski. Um, he had never skied or snowboarded. I have snowboarded about two or three times, but we decided that together we were going to hit the bunny slopes. Um, my sister-in-law, Amber, was helping us. She skis. So we were learning uh, from her what to do, how to stop, all that good stuff. So first day was pretty fun. You know, we were learning how to ski. Our plan for day two was to have me actually teach my boyfriend how to snowboard. First, he wanted to just relax and get some, go get some water, get some food. And so um, I was ready to go and I wanted to go up on a couple of runs. So that's what I did. Um, I went with my brothers and my sister-in-law. We went down about like two runs and then I came back. He told me to go ahead and do um, a couple more runs before he was going to be ready. My brothers, Luke and Jason, um, we're going to go up and we were going to snowboard together just on a nice run. It was going to be just an easy run. Um, there was just a couple of like, greens and blues that we were going to go down, just to hang out and have some nice sibling bonding time. And so we went up the lift. So mostly what I tell you from this point on is going to be from the perspective of my brothers, since I personally don't remember a lot of it or any of it, to be honest. So by this time, I was comfortable with snowboarding again. Before this, it had been two years since I had snowboarded before, but it came back to me pretty naturally. The first like couple of runs, I started, I was going kind of slow, you know, getting, getting the feel for it again. But on this run, I guess I got a huge confidence boost and I wanted to go a little bit faster than normal. So mostly when, it, when snowboarding, I would just follow my brothers. Like Luke and Jason are so good at snowboarding. They do some cool like jumps and tricks and they go super fast. And I was just, you know, happy to, you know, go behind them and not worry about going too fast. But I guess this time around I actually was like, you know what, I'm gonna be the one to go fast. Bad decision, <laughs> really bad decision. So the run that we were doing was about a mile long run um, that had like no sunlight at the time. We also had dark lenses on, so it was hard to see some bumps. Um, this was a run that we had been down before though. And I knew that coming to this one part, it was basically a catwalk part where it flattens out. So the slopes, you know, you go all the way up in elevation with the lift and then you're slowly going down. There was a part that was a lot um, flatter than normal. So for skiers, since you have your poles, it's easier to get going, say, if you get stuck. But for a snowboarder um, on the catwalk part, it can be hard to gain momentum um, if you end up stopping. And so I knew that after this one part, like I was gonna have to keep my speed. And I guess the speed was a little bit too much. <laughs> it was too much speed, too fast. Since we have done this run times before, I had been on this catwalk before. It was a long catwalk and it basically curved to the right. Um, well, I don't know if this, this is my right. <laughs> so it curved for me to the right, 
which for me, I was more comfortable doing toe side. There's a lot of people going past, so I didn't want to like keep, you know, going toe side, heel side and being in front of everyone. So majority of the time I was on my toes, which ended up making my calves and my ankle hurt. And I had complained about this previously to my brothers um, and my sister-in-law and boyfriend that, you know, like, oh, my, my calves kind of hurt on that one part or like my ankle kind of hurts on that one part from having to stay toe side for that long. What happened next was a mixture of me going too fast. And I honestly think it had to do with me being tired. Maybe my calves were hurting too much from staying toe side too long, um, going fast. And again, it was, there wasn't really sunlight on the uh, snow to be able to see where some bumps were. Uh, and we were wearing dark lenses. So um, as I was toe side, my board ended up catching the snow and I just flipped. Um, I ended up hitting my face and then my whole body just flipped and flipped until I just like laid down flat. But my brothers were behind me at this time and so they saw it all happen, which was not normal. They were saying that I was going a lot faster than I normally used to. Normally they're the ones who are in front of me, but I ended up somehow passing them and going really fast. So they saw everything happen. They saw me going really fast, catch an edge, and then my body just like flipped over itself and I just kept, I guess, hitting my head. And uh, they at first thought that I had just got the wind knocked out of me. Um, they were so quick to just get their bindings off and be right by my side. I love my brothers so much love them to death and at the time though they honestly didn't know how serious it was so they told me that I basically was laying there for about a minute not really saying anything just breathing really heavy from the fall I also sat up and like looked around looked like I was gonna pass out and then just laid back down right after this happened there was also a skier that was uh behind us who actually had a radio and who stopped and called it in and asked for the ski patrol to for someone to come check on me. So the first thing that I actually did as far as communicating goes, actually speaking to my brothers after all of this happened, was I took off my goggles and I said three things. I said, I'm so confused. Where am I? What happened? And then they would answer me and then pause a little bit and then I would ask them, them again, I'm so confused, where am I, what happened? And this went on basically the whole five minutes. So this is definitely the point where my brothers said that they realized it was more than just the wind knocked out of me. Like I hit my head really, really hard. The first ski patrol guy got there, started to evaluate me. I told him that I couldn't move my left arm and that I was in serious pain. That was the first time mostly it looked like I got the wind knocked out of me and then I was just confused and then now I'm in a point where I'm in agony and in a lot of pain and telling him that I can't move my arm which obviously is super super scary so while the ski patrol was looking over me my brother Jason was on the phone with my mom asking her some questions taking pictures taking videos of what was happening and at this time the ski patrol really needed to focus on me and ask me questions so they actually asked Luke to step away um, and there's actually a picture, which I can put up right now. There's a picture of me holding on to Luke whenever he's saying this, like asking Luke to step away so that they can just evaluate me and ask me questions. And I like told him, like I asked him not to go, like I just grabbed him and I didn't want him to go. And he just told me like it was really hard for him to leave me at that state, but he knew that obviously the ski patrol knew what they were doing and they really needed to have that personal time to be able to have me locked in and answering questions. One by one, more ski patrol started to show up. And even though I had been complaining about my arm, they were mostly worried about my head. It was pretty clear that I hit my head really hard and that there was something wrong with me. The only answer that I had to the questions that they asked me was my name. I only could tell them that my name was Ashley. I had no clue where I was, what I was doing here, what happened, or even where I lived. I couldn't, I couldn't answer anything. So they actually ended up giving me fentanyl on the top of the mountain when they evaluated everything. And it took about 30 minutes all on the mountain for me to get assessed um, and then to get down to the clinic. 
Jake and Amber were still down at the base of the mountain waiting for us to get there. Luke had called them or texted Amber or something and let them know like, hey, Ashley's hurt. There's something really wrong. You guys need to get to the clinic. We'll be there soon. So they packed up everything and rushed over to the clinic. So once we got to the clinic, they did have doctors there um, to look at me even more, um, see if they can help just while the ambulance was on the way. Also, after they cut off my ski jacket, this was a part that was hard for me to hear <laughs> because right before this, I was so excited that I bought a new ski jacket. I posted pictures on my Twitter. I posted pictures on my Instagram and everything about how excited I was that I got a new ski jacket and it matched my hair, my like purple and pink hair but they cut it off. <laughs> I'm not mad, obviously, because I'm so happy that they were doing their job. And if I'm in agonizing pain saying that my arm is hurting, clearly they're gonna need to get to my arm, but it still is hard. So I actually have the jacket. Let me show you guys. And you can see like the cuts, like where they, where they cut the jacket. RIP my jacket, there goes like 200 bucks. <laughs> So yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll frame this or something. I was transferred to Taos Medical Center where they did some CT scans. Um, and after looking at everything, they realized that they didn't have the, the staff or the neurological department that they needed in order to help me. So it was either go in an ambulance all the way to Albuquerque. It would take a couple hours and it would be through the mountains and everything in the snow definitely not what we should be doing. So they actually use a helicopter to transport patients from Taos Medical Center to Albuquerque. So when I got to Albuquerque, I was told that I was supposed to get an MRI. I think that was one of the reasons why they were transferring me in the first place was because I needed to get an MRI of my brain to see what was going on but apparently something happened and they weren't able to do it. But we did get more CT scans um, at Albuquerque and then they helped hook me up to all these machines, um, gave me lots of drugs, uh, pain medication, all of that. So the first thing that I actually do remember is being woken up by the nurses telling me sort of what happened. Hey, you were in an accident. Your brother Jason and your boyfriend Jake are on their way to the hospital right now, but we also have your parents on the phone. Would you like to talk to them? So I said yes. So my mom told me how much she loved me and that she was on the way. My mom and my dad were already in the car um, driving from North Texas um, our way to be able to meet us and help us drive back. But eventually Jake and Jason did arrive at the hospital. This was still kind of when I was loopy. They filled me in on some of the things that happened, like my jacket was cut. They also did inform me that I fought some of the doctors, I guess because I was in such a confused state that uh, I don't know if it was like at the clinic or at the Taos Medical Center, but there was actually a time where I had to be like strapped down because I was so confused and so scared that I started like pushing people. And I'm also not, this is something that like really scares me about the whole situation and makes me realize like how serious this actually was is I am not at all one to really swear. And apparently I was swearing at a lot of people and like fighting them and that's really scary to me because like that's not me that's not how I act and I mean that was like a completely different person with fight or flight like I found out I'm a fighter and they had to give me some medicine to calm me down and make me realize like hey we're here to help you we're not trying to harm you but at the time it clearly that was not clicking in my head I don't think any of them will ever watch this, but if I hit you or swore at you when you were trying to help me, I am so freaking sorry. I promise that was not me. That was not me. That was someone else. Don't know her. I'm sorry. <laughs> so finally, all of us were able to sleep. I spent the night in the hospital and then in the morning, Jake and Jason came back to pick me up and we were going to meet my parents uh, that were about like two hours away. So from Albuquerque um, back to my parents' house, it was about a seven hour drive. And that was so difficult. 
for me to do because, I mean, I had a grade three concussion, which is the severe concussion. I had a fractured arm and a a slightly fractured back and just in the back, like feeling like complete death, (laughs) having to drive in a car for seven hours. It was not, not the most fun thing that I've ever done in my life. Another thing was that I slept in the hospital. So when I woke up and we were driving, I couldn't take any naps. Like I was awake the whole time and there were some roads that were bumpy and like uncomfortable and I had some headaches um, and I still had like so many drugs in my system and medicine in my system from when I was in the hospital that it made that whole experience really difficult for me. So that's kind of the whole story. Um, I also want to go into what recovery is going to look like for those of you who care about that. So I'll kind of let you guys know about some of the appointments that I've had, the upcoming appointments that I have, um, what things I'm doing in recovery right now, and when I will be able to return streaming. First thing was I went to an orthopedic to get my arm looked at. We got some x-rays and we figured out that I had a fractured radial head. Um, Basically, he just said that I needed to wear a sling for about a week. And then other than that, it would be fine. So I do have pain in my arm uh, throughout the day, but it's definitely not as bad as it used to be. So I can like straighten and bend my arm but whenever it comes to like this motion that's what hurts me so like opening doors opening lids things like that I definitely like I this ain't it (laughs) this it this ain't it I have been painting recently so like if I'm like leaning over and painting or drawing or anything it does tend to hurt my back so then I have to go lay down for a little bit um a lot of it is like me wanting to sit here and like check emails and do paintings and stuff like that but then I have to take frequent breaks to just lay down and give my back a rest thankfully I'm not in a back brace I'm not in a like cast or anything um and then there's nothing really that I have to wear on my head thank god but it's still a tough recovery but it has been almost two weeks and I would say it does feel better but if anything it's just really sore and I definitely try to baby it more. I don't really put a lot of pressure on it. Um, As far as people who want to know about gaming, um, I really am limiting my screen time um, for my brain with my concussion. But also, I I will say, I tried to play one game of Fortnite, and it freaking hurt because how I normally play is, like, I'll tilt my keyboard, and then with this arm, I, like, have to move, and it just, it wasn't it, so... I have not been playing any games. Um, If I do, it's uh, like cognitive function games. So, uh, I mean, Sudoku, like really low, low impact, nothing like going crazy all over the screen. Um, I do, this sounds so lame, but I do word searches and Sudoku and things like that. That was something that my neurologist told me to do in order to make sure that I'm giving my brain some exercise, um, but not really looking at a screen and playing games. So last week I went to my second appointment, which was with a neurologist. She was super, super helpful. I got her all of the tests from the hospitals that I was at, um, any x-rays, CT scans, all of that stuff so that she could look everything over and be able to help me on my process of recovery. Something that did shock me when I went to see her was that she informed me that I didn't just have one severe concussion. I had multiple concussions that when my body kept flipping over and my head was hitting in different ways, um, I ended up suffering multiple concussions. And Another side effect that I have been noticing is my eyesight um, is like two times worse. Now, whenever I like walk outside, my vision is significantly worse. So she explained that also from the bruising, you can tell that I was bruised um, near a part that has to do with my eyesight. My memory is an issue. I've been definitely struggling with that. Like to this day, don't remember a thing from my actual accident. Down the run and then also to when I woke up in Albuquerque there are like hours missing in between seeing her again at the end of January until then I have like five tests that I have to 
come in and do like MRIs, uh, EEGs, uh, just different tests to be able to look at brain waves, to look at just different things about my brain, test different things just to double check and make sure that everything is okay. So I am taking eight pills a day right now. I'm, I'm taking like vitamins and different pills that will help me on my process to recovery. Brain function, memory, eyesight, building and keeping strong bones, muscle and nerve function, and much more. This is my little pill bottle thing and I got it purple, of course. Of course I got it purple. So as of right now, you guys know that I am not streaming on Twitch at the moment. It's it's just way too soon for me to come back. I still have some headaches and I am fumbling over my words sometimes. It's why it took me so long to film this video. It was hard for me to remember some things. Um, and also I really am still needing to limit my screen time. It's just better that I wait until I'm 100% and be able to come back and stream uh, the way that I want to stream, how long I want to stream. I've been told that for my arm, I need to give it about six to eight weeks. Um, same with my back, um, not driving. I'm not allowed to drive for a couple of months. Another thing that she told me was that the keto diet would be something that I should look into. Um, it is something that I have done before, but she said specifically for my brain, there are a lot of um, benefits for the healthy fats that you can uh, get. It would be a clean keto. So I think whenever I did keto, I didn't do a very good job um, at eating clean or doing it right. So I am in the process of looking things up, researching keto and making a whole plan. I hope that this wasn't too like jumbled around and you guys do have sort of an explanation of what happened, what my recovery is looking like and sort of what to expect for the future. This is my first video like this where I'm sitting down and talking to you guys. There's another video that I do have planned that I know you guys are very, very excited for, which will be my apartment tour. A lot of you guys have seen like this in my apartment and some of my kitchen on my streams, and you guys have asked me so long. I mean, I've been living here for like over one and a half years and I still haven't done an apartment tour. So I do have plans to clean up around my apartment, film an apartment tour, as well as possibly film a setup tour if that is what you guys want. I also had tweeted out saying that I was going to be filming this video. And so I asked if there was anyone who had any specific questions that they wanted me to answer. So I'm going to go through just a couple of them just to end off this video um, and answer some of your direct questions. Nick was asking, have you ever snowboarded before? If so, were you comfortable on the run that you were on? I'm, I don't think I'm a bad snowboarder, um, but I definitely think that I just let myself get too relaxed at a time that I shouldn't have. I was, we were almost done with the run. It was right at the end, you know, it was just the catwalk, whatever. And then we were going to go down. And so, but I guess I was just going too fast. Um, but yes, so yes, I have snowboarded, snowboarded before um, and I was comfortable on the run. Um, I do see a lot of questions from people asking what my first thought was when uh, it happened. And I can honestly say, I don't know because <laughs> I don't remember it happening. So, well, I guess I can tell you what my first thought was, was I'm so confused. What happened? Where am I? <laughs> That's my first thought. And that was my only thought for quite some time. Lapua asked, after all that had happened post-recovery, would you ever go snowboarding again? Yes. I don't think I'm going to be going um, soon, but I definitely can see myself snowboarding again. So the last question is from Tights, and he said, what have you learned from this accident? Um, honestly, the number one thing that I have learned from this accident was how much of an internet bubble I was in. Before the accident, it was just stream, 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 upload YouTube videos, tweet this, like Instagram that, check emails here, maybe text some people here. I need to stream consistently. I need to be on at this time. I need to stream for this amount of time so that I can continue to grow my stream. It was hard for me to take a break. It was hard for me taking a day off 
from stream. I've spent so much time online and when I'm forced to limit my screen time, I've realized that there's a lot of things that I'm missing out on, mostly being just taking care of myself. I think I fell into just this social media like trance or like, I don't know, just day by day, I would just get on stream, eat, and then go to sleep. <laughs> like I just, I just lived a lot of my life online. So I am learning um, how to reprioritize things um, because I'm forced to slow down. Well, I hope that overall you guys did enjoy the video, that it was informative, that you guys learned a little bit more about what happened about my accident, sort of what recovery is going to look like. I will be looking to stream again soon. I miss you guys so much. I miss streaming. Again, it's weird having to like record a video because I know I'm like talking to you guys, but it's just weird because you guys aren't here live with me. I'm used to seeing a chat and being able to respond to people. And so I miss that and just know that I am doing everything that I can to make myself better and to get healthy. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm on the road to recovery. I also can't thank you guys enough with all of the support that you guys have shown me with the messages that you have sent me. Um, people have donated to my stream when I'm not even live, just sending really sweet messages saying, hey, I hope this pays for medical bills. Like, I love you. Thank you for being an inspiration. Like, you guys are inspiring to me in this really, really hard time. So I seriously want to say thank you. I do think I might come back and do just chatting streams, um, more things where I am not going to be playing a game like Fortnite where there's a lot going on um, and there's a lot for my brain to process. Um, things that I am considering doing is maybe some art streams. Minecraft is pretty chill. Um, I do really want to come back and to stream. I don't know what that is gonna look like, whether it will be only like maybe two hours a day, maybe like four hours every, like like three days a week or something. I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't really decided. It's, it's a hard thing for me to figure out what I want to do, but I will let you guys know. So be sure to follow me on my Twitter and my Instagram. It is just Electra. If you guys want to follow me, it'll all be in the description below. But also, if you aren't subbed to my YouTube channel and you're here, might as well sub, you know? We're trying to grow the YouTube channel and I will do my best to have more IRL content as well as finish our Star Wars series. This has been my story time about my snowboarding accident. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Bye.